Ladies, gentlemen, hello. I'm Chef Michael and welcome to a special edition cooking lesson for a very special day. Every mother deserves to not only sleep in on Mother's Day Sunday, but they deserve breakfast for when they wake up and maybe even a sneaky glass of Moet and Chandon champagne. Today, we are cooking some of the finest pancakes you'll ever see. I will show you an easy way to make your own and also go through the toppings that may be in your cupboard so you can create your own adventure. Let's get straight into it. First, as always, make sure you have washed your hands and you have a good clean area to work from. I'm very blessed to be up in the hive and have such a beautiful view here at Rose Hill Gardens. Equipment wise, before you start, you'll need a large bowl, a whisk, a jug, a flipper, a non-stick pan if possible. Some of the toppings require a chopping board and a knife. If you're a child, first of all, you're amazing for cooking for your mum, but maybe get an adult to use a knife for you. In the large bowl, place 260 grams of self-raising flour, 50 grams of caster sugar, and a pinch of salt. Mix these ingredients together until they're well combined. In a jug or a bowl, add 375 mils of milk and one egg. Free range if possible. A happy egg makes a happy pancake. Mix the egg and the milk together. What you want to do now is combine the wet mix and the dry mix. Whisk this until there's no lumps. Fun fact, while we're whisking, do you know the highest pancake flip was just over 31 feet? That's close to 10 meters. As you're whisking, what you want is a nice figure eight. So if you can get your whisk and you can draw a nice eight in the batter, then you know you're on the right track. Now you have your batter, you wanna get it into a jug, or you can scoop it straight out of the bowl. You wanna heat up your pan. You want to add a smidge of butter, yay big. I'm using two pans today just to speed up the process. So when you hear a sizzle of the butter, that's when you can add your batter. I'll leave the size of the pancake up to you. Today, I'm making them nice and big. You can twist them around. Once you start to see bubbles in the pancake, the bottom's cooked. You can flip it over. The pancake will then rise and it's very close to being ready. What you want to do each time is swirl it around the pan, soak in the butter. Repeat the process each time, adding a bit more butter. If you feel like the pan's getting too hot, just take it off the heat. Don't stress too much if you don't get it right the first time. You've got enough butter here to make a couple of dozen. Make sure you turn off the heat. Get the last of the pancakes onto the plate. Now toppings. This is the endless part. What's left over from Easter? Anything? What's in the fridge? What's in the cupboard? Anything goes with a pancake. Shakespeare himself spoke of this. For the first version, this one's for the sweet tooth. It's Rocky Road pancakes. Lightly butter the bottom one, brush it with a bit of Nutella. You want the nuts, you want the coconut, and you're gonna put the next one on top. You're gonna do that twice. You don't wanna do it too much. Well, like I said, this one is for the sweet tooth. Oof. This top pancake, you're now going to add marshmallow, a couple of pieces of Kit Kat and Mars bar, a couple of bits of white chocolate, strawberry. Some people say I go overboard sometimes, I think this might be the time. We're going to finish this off with some strawberry ice cream, but you can finish it off with any ice cream you want. Rocky Road pancakes. Now for a more substantial pancake, we're gonna make a nice savory one. First, get some pecans, chop them up, and we'll get them in the pancake mix. Now, we're gonna tip a little bit of maple syrup, and we're gonna whisk that into the mix as well. Just probably a tablespoon, I reckon. We're gonna grate some potato. Don't worry about the skin, just grate it all. Get it all in there. Mix this all up. You're gonna to wanna to chop some oregano as well, freshly from our garden. If you don't have fresh oregano, most herbs will do. And a little bit of mixed herbs from your cupboard. Mix that in and you're ready to cook. Same as before, we're gonna heat up the pan. We're gonna put in a smidge of butter. This time, we're gonna make a big pancake. At the same time, I'm gonna cook some bacon. 
Scoop the mix, make sure you scoop the potato, the pecans, the herbs, everything. Get it all into the pan. Make a nice big one. Once again, spin it around, let it soak up all the butter. Mum deserves a super breakfast, so let's get it all on. Bacon, beautiful. When you start to see it cooking around the edges, it's good, but you want to cook this one a little longer. When you see the edges starting to cook, turn the temperature down. You want to get under this pancake and give it a good flip. Once the pancake starts to rise, you know it's ready. Once your bacon's seared, cook it to how you like. Bacon goes on. I'm gonna crumble some feta, crumble some pecans. Finish the dish with the fried egg. You wanna place the egg on top. A sprig of oregano, a little bit of maple syrup. Spin that around. And you are in the good books, guaranteed. That was amazing. For the last type, this is the one I'm cooking for my mum this weekend for Mother's Day. Got some fresh berries. I've added a little bit of champagne and I've cooked them down. Put some berries over the pancakes, like so. Some of the liquid. I'm gonna add some fruits that aren't too sweet. So banana, dragon fruit, chuck a couple of strawberries, raspberries, whatever fruit you have lying around. These pancakes and this beautiful fruit salad will go really nicely with a beautiful glass of Moet and Chandon Imperial. I'll be cooking some of these this weekend, so maybe you should try too. To my mum and all the other mums out there, happy Mother's Day to you from all of us here at the Australian Turf Club. We also want everyone to stay safe and dearly look forward to seeing everyone back out and about and enjoying the races very soon.